Hi, this is Oliver from Monster Follow-Up, soon to be instant customer, and I want to introduce you to our live conferencing module that we've just added to the system. Now, live conferencing is a fantastic way for you to meet with prospects, customers, business associates, employees, colleagues in a meeting environment where you can share your screen. You'll be able to share a whiteboard. You can share high def content like videos or PowerPoint presentations, PDF documents, Word documents, and a ton of other file types. It's a great meeting tool and we're really proud to offer it to you. So let's quickly show you how you can set it up. It's really quite easy. All right, so the first thing that you want to do is go to one of your campaigns and you're going to need to turn it on for live conferencing. And the way that you do that is you go ahead and click on the edit link. Now that we're on our setup page, we just simply want to scroll down to the bottom of the page where you'll see event settings. Switch on event settings and the first thing you're going to come to is event type. On the drop down, go ahead and select one time or recurring. So again, basically live conferencing only works on one time or recurring, not as an on demand event. So we're going to select one time. Next thing that we're asked is to go ahead and select a date and time. So I'm going to go ahead and set one up from just a few minutes from now. We'll scroll down just a bit more. The next important thing you'll see is media type. Make sure on media type, which is a drop down, that you select conference. Conference is going to go ahead and add an additional link, which says add media files to your conference. Now, in Monster Follow-Up, you are aware that we have a media center where you can hold all your files. And if you scroll to the top of the page, under manage you'll see media files this is for your simulated live webinars and teleseminars um, but for live conferencing for the time being we have a separate media center so you need to go ahead and click on that link and then you can upload any file type that you want i'm going to go ahead and just do a little demo of where i upload an iphone app so i'm going to go ahead and click on iphone video i'm going to put in a tag called video i can put a quick description and then the next thing I see is visibility. And visibility is basically, do I want this file to be shared with my public, with my viewers? So I could either have it hidden and then only it will be visible on my screen during the conference, or I can make it publicly visible to them and also downloadable to them. So it's an awesome way for you to share your files with your viewers. Right now I'm gonna keep it on public and click proceed. Here's the fine print that you just have to make sure that you meet these requirements. Files that you upload have to be smaller than two gigabytes. And the supported formats, we have video files such as Flash, MOV files, MPEG-4, and a few others. Just go ahead and review the list here. We have standard audio formats like MP3 and WAV. We have text documents like rich text, text documents, Word documents, HTML, and also Excel. And then you can also upload media files like PowerPoints or PDF files. You go ahead and choose the document that you want to upload. So I'm going to go ahead and add my, my iPhone video. Here's my iPhone video. I'm going to go ahead and click on add and you're going to see that it, there's a progress bar. It's going to upload. But the really important thing to keep in mind is that after it finishes uploading, there's a certain processing time that has to take place. So you'll see that the text here on the screen changed and it says, please wait for this page to take you to your new file. Closing this page now will interfere with your file upload process. So don't do anything. Let the page change on its own and everything is going to work great. Okay, now so my file is finished uploading, you'll see a list of all the other files that I have uploaded previously. And if I want to go ahead and preview them, I can click on view. Um, I can download the file if I want to check it. Um, right now, we're just going to go ahead and add an additional file. So I'm going to click on upload again. And this time I'm going to upload a PDF. I'm going to make it public again. I'm going to go ahead and proceed with the upload. And actually, I changed my mind. I'm going to go ahead and select a PNG to upload. We're going to wait for that to upload. That, again, should just take a few minutes for the page to naturally change on its own because we don't want to interfere in the upload process. So here you go. You can see that I've uploaded uh, my file. And if I want to go ahead and upload more files, um, videos, whatever I like, I can just go click on Upload and do more. Um, I also have a browse files category and what this does is it breaks it up by the tags that I separated so it's a kind of a really nice filter that you can use and there's also recorded meetings and I'm going to show you this one a little later on but if I record a meeting I can share it with any people who registered for my event but were not able to show up um, and this way they'll be able to see the entire presentation. 
um, but we'll get back to this in just a minute. So let's go back to my campaign. All right, the one thing I haven't done yet is I haven't saved it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. And this is going to create my campaign. Now, since the time that I chose was coming up within just a matter of a few moments, you can see that I already have a link on my overview page that says launch the conference presenter window. I can do that, but before I do that, I need to make sure that I've already shared my registration links with people so they can register for this. So you'd simply click on this link that if I do this right now, it's gonna take me to a web form. I obviously didn't put anything else on this page, so all you see is the web form. But if, my, if I share this link with um, my audience, they can go ahead and subscribe to it and then they'll show up as um, registered subscribers for this event. So let me go ahead and do that now and I'll get a couple people to join. Okay, so I've had two of my colleagues go ahead and subscribe to that registration link and you can see them in my subscriber list here. Um, so now I'm ready to go ahead and launch my presentation. All right, and you'll see that it immediately starts uh, my conference. It's just quickly asking me to um, accept an applet so it can access my computer. So it needs to get basically connect to my microphone and video cam. Um, and you're also offered two audio settings. You can use your internal microphone on your computer and speakers or your telephone bridge to call into for your audio. In this particular situation, I'm gonna go ahead and use VoIP. So this is using my computer and there you go. You see me, um, how you doing? And now in a few minutes, my participants are gonna join as soon as the uh, conference is supposed to start, which should be just a minute or so. All right, basic navigation on this page before they get here is this main presentation area. So this is where all of the high def content such as videos, PowerPoint presentations, PDF and documents would all be displayed. Um, it basically has on the left sidebar options for all the files that I uploaded. So again, if I made those public files, they'd be available to all my attendees to download. If they were protected files, they would be able to see the file names, but they wouldn't be able to download them. Um, and if they were private, only I would see the file names. And when I click on it, it would jump to the center presentation area. Um, so that works really, really well. You also have a bunch of options up above. Once I get um, guests to join my campaign or to join my conference, I can mute all my guests. I can have the telephone bridge. So if I click on use telephone bridge, it's gonna pop up with a dial in information. Um, so in case I wanted to email that out to somebody really quickly, um, I can enable VoIP for audio. So if I click on that, it's going to give me instructions on what to do to uh, set up my audio. I can take the webcam of me and present it to full screen. So I'm gonna do that right now and you'll see that it moves to the center stage, resizes my video a little bit bigger, gives a second and there you go. Little color issue there, corrected itself. All right, um, I can do the same thing for any video participants who join. Um, so when my subscribers join, there they are. I have Rick and Jean who have just joined us. Um, and actually, let's go ahead and show you kind of a neat feature right now. Rick and Jean can be, the, they're participants. So they're people here watching my event. But let's say they were panelists and I wanted to give them a video seat. I wanted to be able to see their webcam. I could just simply click on this button and you'll see that it opens up Rick's webcam right above. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to Jean. And there's her webcam. So these are two panelists. And when I'm ready to have them speak and to present things for us, I can just go ahead and turn them on um, and make them hosts or presenters. All right. So again, let's go back to the features that we've got here. I have something called hide participant information. So right now, Rick and Jean on their screens can see other participants. So Rick can see that Jean is in there. Jean can see that Rick is in there. If I don't wanna share that information with other people, I can just simply click on hide participant information and it will disappear from their screen. Um, I can also record my conference. So since Rick and Jean have just joined and this is really the, the point that I would start speaking to my audience, I'm gonna go ahead and click record conference. It's gonna ask me, what do I wanna call it? I'm gonna call it demo a, press OK, and I'm recording. All right, um, now let's go ahead and show you my desktop really quick. So if I click on my desktop, 
you'll see a little confirmation message in the middle of the screen that says, you sure you want to share your desktop? You go start screen sharing, and I'm now showing my desktop. It says, it confirms for me, you are now sharing your desktop. Anything on your desktop is now visible to your attendees. So since I'm showing my desktop, I can just simply reduce this window, and anything on my desktop will be visible to my participants. So I'm going to open up a web browser. Here we have the Instant Customer homepage. Maybe I want to show them something on the homepage. I want to go through feature review, or if this was a coaching session, Rick is actually going to demo this for you guys in just a second. But if it was a coaching session, I could walk you guys through um, any website, any software program, anything I want that would require me to share my screen with you. So it's a really cool feature. Here you go, I just changed the page here, and you'll notice that the transition on your screen is really quick and really smooth. All right, I'm going to go ahead and bring my conference window back up again, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and play one of the videos that I uploaded. So let's go ahead and play the iPhone video. And that changes my presentation window, and it's going to start playing the video. Hello, this is Oliver Waller from Monster Follow Up. And in this video, I want to introduce you to the Networking Business Card Prospector app that we've just created for the iPhone. So let's answer the question, what does this do? Simply put, it lets you scan business cards and assign them to a monster follow-up campaign that in turn will send out autoresponders. You can simply take a photo of a business card with your iPhone and monster follow-up will transcribe so you can see that um, through that demo that I can really present any video to the screen. It's got great quality, really good playback, nice and smooth, not choppy at all. And um, it's a great way to kind of get your messages across to people. So I can go ahead and click on other images. Like I want to show a PDF or one of my PowerPoint presentations. I can click on that and that will move it to center screen and start me. Um, I can basically click through my slides the same way I would as if I was using um, PowerPoint. Now, just as a little side note, we are working hard on getting um, Keynote availability integrated into the system, so that should be coming very, very soon. All right, so the next thing I want to show you is our whiteboard, and the whiteboard is a great feature. Again, Rick is going to demo this for you in just a second, but it's a great way for me to go ahead and share my ideas um, through a whiteboard with my audience. So let me go ahead and click on these little um, shapes up here. I can change the color to whatever I want. So I'm going to do a blue. I can make it a, increase the weight and I can go ahead and create any size shape that I want. I can also put text on here. I can start talking. This is my text. And I also have a pencil and I can start drawing on here um, whatever I want. So maybe I need to kind of diagram something so it goes from this to this, to this. All right, um, and a great feature is I can share this with people. So if I go ahead and click on shared whiteboard, I'll turn that on, and now my participants can jump in there as well, and they can start drawing on the screen to share their ideas. Great, so you can see Gene just added some information, a little smiley face, but just shows how other participants can share all this information together. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this screen. And the next thing that I want to do is I'm gonna go ahead and put one of my participants as the host. So I'm gonna go ahead and take Rick as the host right now. So let me go ahead and make him host. And the way that I do that is I click on Rick's name and you'll see some additional options pop up. There is a private chat, so I can go ahead and chat with him privately, like maybe during my presentation, I could quickly send him a message saying, are you ready? I'm about to make you host. Um, there's the assigned a video seat. You saw that I did this in the beginning. I can make him a host. And if this is a particular user that's causing problems or they're not being too friendly on chat, I can go ahead and ban the user if I want. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and make Rick the host. So let me go ahead and click on that feature. And now you see Rick has kind of taken over the main video screen. There's Rick there. And I've moved over to one of the 
um, just video webcams up above. And now Rick has got full control over it and he can go ahead and show you his desktop and anything he wants to do. So Rick, go ahead and tell us about how you like using um, the conferencing and what you use it for. Hey, thanks Oliver. Hi everybody, this is Rick. I'm the Senior Support Manager for Monster Follow-Up, if you don't know me. You will be seeing a lot of me in the upcoming beta. I'm going to be doing a bunch of live webcasts to keep you guys informed on what's going on and to answer questions. Uh, I'm here today to let you guys see what I like best about the new conferencing system. I'm very excited about it. There are a bunch of other systems out there that I'm glad to be not using anymore. So. Let's go ahead and take a look at the things that I like using here. Uh, first and foremost, I just love the fact that we can control the middle of the screen all the time. I'm sure you were seeing that up in the you know, top corner of the screen. If you do have a part of your presentation where you're talking, just addressing your audience, not real good to be up in the corner of the screen like that. Much better to be in front. Uh, I love this aspect of it when you do have you know parts in your presentation that are is you talking you, everybody they want to see you they want to see your expressions they want to see your enthusiasm over it so I love that part of it and you just click anywhere uh, off the picture and you go straight back uh, to the corner so you can go back to the middle of the screen now I do a lot of coaching a lot of training so I'm very important for me to uh, have a whiteboard so I can do some strategizing and some flow charting, some mind mapping, things like that. Uh, the thing that I like about this whiteboard, it's actually really simple and it's really forgiving. So if you make a mistake, you're kind of not locked into it. Um, for instance, if I just have a couple of campaigns here that I'm going to show how they link up, I don't really have to be too concerned about where I place everything because I can use this little hand over here and move everything around. So if I want to say, yes, everybody from campaign number one is there, everybody from campaign there is two, and I'm just going to draw a big line here that we're leading from one to the other. This is not the greatest line in the world, but it's fine. I mean, you can race it, you can move it. And again, you can even move this to wherever you want. I'm just kind of moving the entire thing there, but kind of cool and if you need to erase anything pretty simple to do or erase the whole board you can also share the board so that you can share information with your group and again that depends on how big your conference is and whether it's interactive or more of a demonstration what I'm going to be using most obviously is the screen sharing which I found to be really good a lot of the screen sharing uh, programs that I've used on some of the other uh, platforms is really problematic it won't work on some computers I've got one at home that absolutely will not work with uh, one of the screen sharing routines through one of the programs it drives me nuts so just very simple start the screen sharing and bam gonna bring up uh, I'm sure everybody is pretty familiar with which is just your basic monster follow-up account so I am actually going to go to my infamous video player campaign, which I've used on many of occasion with uh, on our uh, FAQ webinars or bi-weekly FAQ webinars. And so there you go. So, you know, very simple, really clean, quick, uh, you know, the resolution on it's great. So, you know, anything you need to do interactively, as long as your net connection is good, this is going to be really uh, you know, if or if you're just using a program on your computer, either way, uh, the screen sharing itself is not going to get in the way. Uh, a couple of the other things I love, of course, it's got the chat over here. Chat's really nice to have. You've always got, you know, something's going to happen. You're going to lose your audio. You're going to you're going to skip something, and you don't want people, uh, you know, with their audio kicking in all the time. So the chat's a real good way for them to communicate, especially things like that to you. The other thing I love is the files. You can have public files here that are downloadable right from within the program. So if I've got a, some code, either some form code or some custom email code, you can download it straight from here. So as there are, you know, four or five of the features that I love and cannot wait to use on a regular basis.
Okay, back to you, Oliver. Great, thank you very much. Now, if I also, I could um, make Gene a presenter. And let's go ahead and do that really quick. So give me one second. Let's make Gene the host. And you'll see that the webcam is going to switch from Rick to Gene. There's Gene. Hi, Gene. All right. And one thing that you notice um, with all of us is that we're all wearing our headphone uh, microphones. And basically, it's a really good idea when you do this type of conferencing that you don't get feedback um, by using the onboard speakers of your computer. So having these headsets um, is really a good idea to get really good quality audio out to your audience and also hearing them very well. I'm going to go ahead and take over control again. And now I am once again the presenter. And as Gene was talking about, you know, we've got those present call to action. So all you need to do is just click that button, select whatever one you want. We have a buy now, a set up, a sign up now, limited time only, or watch the video. So let's do my buy now. I simply put in the link that I want to put. And I do the present to call to action, and it's going to show up on everyone's screen. They just simply click on that link, and it's going to take them to my buy option. All right. As we go... Um, kind of mature this product, we're going to go ahead and make these uh, buy buttons, you know, fancier and nicer looking, give you a little bit more customization. But right now they definitely get the job done. All right, so let's go ahead and close this out. And the last thing I need to show you on this particular screen is the group chat. So if we go over to group chat, I can go ahead and type in a message to everybody. Hi to my audience and my audience is going to respond back to me. And um, it's really a cool way just for your audience to interact with each other. Gene's just said hello here. Um, Rick will do the same thing in just a second. Um, and it's always a good idea to kind of moderate your chat or have another staff member moderate your chat. So if you have someone going a little rogue on you and not being too friendly, you guys, again, can go ahead and ban that particular user um, to make sure that you kind of keep everything um, on the path and direction that you want to go. Remember, I'm recording the webcast here. So the next thing I want to show you is let's go ahead and end this meeting now. So I click on end meeting and I say, OK, and it's going to take me right back to my overview page. And in about 20 to 30 minutes, you're going to get a little event tab to pop up here and it's going to say events and you click on it and it'll have all of your um, recordings that you did for this particular campaign. So you can go ahead and take a link and send it out to anyone who missed the event and they can rewatch it. Um, but if you're in a rush and you want to see what it looks like, go ahead and click on the edit button. OK, again, you're going to find that at the bottom of the page. We click on event settings, scroll down just a bit more and you'll see add media files to your conference. You click on that and it's going to bring you to your media center. Go ahead and click on recorded meetings. And there you go. You have two different recordings that I've done. Um, I'm going to go and click on the one that I just did. So you do view. And here it is. It's going to pop up the entire meeting. And the cool thing about it is that it does it in complete sequence. So you'll basically be able to see the host video. You'll be able to see the group chat. So as the group chat comes in, that's going to appear. You're going to have your media display area. I'm just going to go ahead and um, scroll through this right now. So you can see like here, that was the screen sharing demo that I did. So I was able to share my screen with everybody. So what's really cool about this is that, again, any participants um, or any registered um, subscribers that missed your event, they can go ahead and take a look at it here. And it's a really nice window to watch it. It looks a little small right here, but you just simply go to the full screen option. And you'll see it jumps to the full screen. Everything is really clear looking to them. Um, and they're not going to miss a beat. So it, it's, a, it's a great little uh, option that you've got for people who've missed your event. All right. And that is pretty much it. Um, we know that you're going to love this uh, product. It's something that is really useful because, again, what Monster Follow Up has always offered you in the past is a great way to simulate uh, live webinars and webcasts so you can have like your evergreen type of webcast. But what we're doing for you now is basically giving you a way to meet with people live. So no more simulation. This is a live meeting. And again, this is cloud based. OK, and what does cloud based mean? It means that our servers are up on the Amazon cloud. Um, so as you get more customers who join or register for your event, um, any processing or additional database storage that we need to access is going to just dynamically upgrade on its own. 
and um, it you know basically it means that you can have as many people as you need. Um, right now, our site, if you go ahead and select a conferencing package to add to your um, monthly membership program, your monthly membership level, um, you can basically have anything from 25 people all the way up to 5,000. However, if you guys are a big player and you know that you're going to have more than 5,000 people, simply contact us through um, our, a support ticket. Let us know in advance, and we'll go ahead and make sure that it's completely set and working for you. All right, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the demo. Any questions, just send us a, a ticket, and we'll get back to you guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.